first of the story segment tonight, beginning last December, a police in Northampton, Massachusetts, in the center of the state, greeted some students in that town with high fives every Friday. Programs designed to allow kids and cops to become friendly. But as Fox News correspondent Rob Schmidt reports, that program has now been stopped. Hi, I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. This week, I explored a local story that made national news for unintentional reasons. The High Five Fridays police outreach program that had been implemented in local elementary schools in our area was recently discontinued due to community concerns. I was just wondering, is there any youth-specific <coughs> anti-bias or racial awareness training that your officers who go into schools or do the High Five program go through? We just finished, actually I just posted today on social media, our training from last year. Actually our highest rated training category, our officers spent uh, 755 hours of training on bias-based policing. So we don't restrict it uh, just to our, our school officer. Uh, we expose that sort of training to all of our staff, but also our school officer does go to particular trainings regarding issues within schools and certainly some of that is around race. Following the end of the program, a post by a local blogger criticized the decision and caused an online uproar, which in turn led to coverage from sources such as New York Times and Fox News. I got to sit down with the Northampton Police Chief Jody Casper to hear more about the program and the events that followed its conclusion. Enthusiastic, not be intimidated or scared walking into the building, so we thought, let's take a step back and kind of process the information that we've been given and look at a way to do this better. Mm -hmm. uh, we first heard about the program out at the IACP conference, which is the International Association of Chiefs of Police Conference, which is held annually in different areas all over the United States. Mm -hmm. This year's conference it was out in San Diego. So two of our captains had gone out there and they heard about this program at that conference from one of the presenters who was talking about kind of innovative new ways to mm -hmm. engage with youth. Mm -hmm. uh, youth engagement is a really big part of kind of the crux of good community policing, mm -hmm. so we wanted to grab onto it. We thought it was a great idea. However, members of our local community argue that the story was blown out of proportion and that the media coverage has created rather large misconceptions. It's kind of interesting. So it's, um, there were really valid concerns that were raised, yeah, and yeah. I think part of the frustrating part that has gone on over the last week around this program is that there's a perception that the, the school committee members or parents and families that raise concerns mm -hmm were somehow like anti-police. Yeah. And that really was never the narrative that mm -hmm. I ever heard or believed or anything like that. That's the narrative that, that went running into the national media and, you know, all the media outlets mm -hmm. that made it as this, like, us versus them type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just never was that. Mm -hmm. with, with the way that people digest their news these days. You know, they mm -hmm. see a headline or they see a story. They, they believe the whole thing instantly. They read comment yeah. threads that are you know, yeah, not yeah. based in fact sometimes, <laughs> and also horrible in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then they just go with that story, never taking the time to really do the research or really ask questions about it. This incident is an example of a larger trend in our nation surrounding police and minorities. This may be a topic that our community is divided on, but it's not to the inflated level that the media portrayed it as. Once again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is.